Good evening, everyone. My name is Rochelle Lasky, and I'm a co-host tonight. My husband, Jared, and I will be running this master class. We're so excited you guys have joined us. I just want to give a couple of housekeeping items, as well as set the expectation for what we are going to do here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us once again. This is going to be a one-hour master class. Um, feel free to jump in and out if you need to. Of course, you do not have to stay for the entire time, but we highly recommend it specifically because we're going to start with teaching and then have an activation at the end, which is going to be powerful. So in order to get ready, grab a pen and paper or open up notes in your phone or maybe a Word document on your computer so that you can take some notes because the teaching is going to be really powerful and I don't want you to miss me. <clears throat> excuse me, anything. Um, a couple other things, please keep your mic muted. Uh, we will have some Q&A at the last 10 minutes or so, but other than that, we'd really like you to keep your mic muted so that everyone can hear the teaching and it can be clear. Feel free to use the chat if you have any questions. Again, my name is Rochelle Lackey and I'm here to help you guys. I'll be li listing a couple of links as well. And we hope you just came to learn what tonight is all about the Holy Spirit. So we hope you enjoy tonight's teaching. Jared, on to you. Hey guys, thank you so very much for being part of this masterclass, the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. That was my lovely bride, Rochelle Lasky. We've been married 18 amazing years with four awesome kids. We've built a bunch of e-courses and we have the podcast Adventures in the Spirit. And we love to coach people. So as my bride had said, this is one hour of instruction with uh, a special offer that will be given to you at, at about halftime about an e-course fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, but I want to briefly mention coaching. We just started a pilot program of coaching for people who go through our e-courses. So we just started that last month and starting Sunday, April 11th. And then April 18th and the 25th at 8 p.m., students who purchase the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit e-course will be coached through that. But there's also the free e-course, the Baptism with the Holy Spirit, and that's all on charismacourses.com. So we'll tell you guys a little bit more about that. But um, if you're, you know, I know we all live busy lives, but if you feel led to donate to our ministry, we are helping rescue and rehabilitate sex trafficking victims, women and children in the United States and in Honduras. So if God leads you to give, a uh, donation of any, any size is greatly appreciated at paypal.me forward slash fireborn ministries. Uh, but we'll, my wife will tell you a little bit, bit more about that at halftime. But I'm excited for tonight's one hour long master class with the activation to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I, I want to encourage you stay engaged for the full hour and be part of the activation and be filled up with the Holy Spirit. Whether this is the first time that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit or second or 20th, because there's one baptism with the Holy Spirit, but there are many fillings of the Holy Spirit so we'll, we'll talk about that tonight as we're discussing the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. So I, I want to get tonight started with a word of prayer. So precious, wonderful Jesus, be glorified through this time. We pray that everything runs smoothly, that the technology uh, is, is perfect, uh, that, that it, it's all for your glory and that your wonderful Holy Spirit touch people, empower them, fill them, and be glorified. Yes, may Jesus be high and lifted up. May Jesus be glorified. We dedicate this time to you and we pray your blessing, your presence, your power on everybody right now people who are live right now and people who will watch this later holy spirit from head to toe even now i'm seeing your holy oil being poured out your incredible anointing oil like it poured out on aaron's beard i think it's psalm 133 like oil poured on the head and i pray that 
people sense and encounter the oil of the Holy Spirit now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being part of this masterclass, the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, what we've got with Adventures in the Holy Spirit podcast. Uh, just in one year, we've got 106,000 amazing downloads as, as it's not just information, but it's also impartation and activation. Uh, so tonight, that's really what I want to do. I want to lay the, the, the foundation and the groundwork about who the Holy Spirit is and discuss speaking in tongues and what that is, what that looks like, and how that could even activate the prophetic. And I'm, I know that some people may try to separate some of these things and think that tongues are separate, but they're actually part of the prophetic. There's a role of tongues in the prophetic. I'll get into that a little more later, but I want you guys to know that I love the Holy Spirit. And because of him, I'm here today, and I'm telling the world all about him. I love Jesus. I love God the Father. I know him as Abba, as Daddy. And this was a lifelong process that I'd been through, uh, you know, and I've even, even had, you know, there's been ups and downs, the roller coaster of life. But without the Holy Spirit, I would not be here today. And my desire is that you encounter him. And you know him. So this is about him. So I want to introduce you to my best friend, the wonderful and incredible Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was present at creation. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So in the very beginning of, before time even, the Holy Spirit was present. He was present over the darkness, over the void of the heavens and of, of what became the earth. He was present and part of the, the creation of the world, just as he is part of your regeneration, as you commit your life to Jesus and he, you are born again in that moment from John chapter three, he regenerated the earth present at creation and the spirit of God was there. He's timeless and he's perfect. He's been present throughout the Bible from beginning to to end, and he's present with us, and he's present with you right now in this very moment. You may sense him, you may not. You don't always have to feel him, but the biblical and scriptural truth is that he's always there. So in this moment, real quick, I want to encourage you to acknowledge him being with you and just tell him thank you for being present. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for being present with us right now. Thank you. The Holy Spirit is a person. I think that's one of the main things that I want to, to encourage you to know and to understand that he is a person. Every, if you read the scripture, every pronoun referring to the Holy Spirit in the Bible is he. It's not it. There's a difference between a person and a thing. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. He's not an energy. He's not an impersonal force. He is a person throughout the scripture. We see that, that it's always in reference to he. So he's not an energy. He's not some distant thing. He's close. He's intimate. He's personal. He's a person and he has feelings. He has personality. In the scripture, whenever we see the word spirit, when it's capitalized, the word spirit is pneuma, or some people say pneuma in the Koine Greek. But even though the, that that term is neutral, meaning it's 
neither male nor female, anything referring around the spirit of capital S, Holy Spirit, the Panuma, always references Holy Spirit as a person, as a personality, as a he. Now, uh, the Holy Spirit is a person. So just, he's obviously divine. And as a person, um, he, we are persons, we have personality, we have character traits. So the Holy Spirit can be, has feelings. The Holy Spirit has feelings, just like you and I have feelings. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And then in the following Bible verses of Ephesians chapter 4, it shows us what can grieve him, what can grieve the Holy Spirit. And that is our anger, our bitterness, our language, but he can be grieved by these things because he wants the best for us. So we can grieve him. So as a person, he has feelings and he could, he could be angered. And that's a whole nother topic that I didn't want to get into tonight, but he can be grieved. So he has feelings. So that's in Ephesians chapter four, verse 30. But the Holy Spirit is, empowers us. In Zechariah chapter four, verse six, it says, then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So the Holy Spirit empowers us. The Holy Spirit empowered Zechariah, gave him a mission, gave him a vision to pursue. And the Holy Spirit empowered all the prophets, all the judges throughout the scripture. So just as he was present at the very creation in Genesis 1, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, uh, he is throughout the whole scripture, but through the scripture, he had a role to play in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And he empowered the, the saints, he empowers the prophets, he empowered Moses. Uh, but in the Old Testament, he operated a little bit differently than, than now under the New Covenant era. Uh, in the Old Testament, the, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit was limited. But what is amazing is that under the New Covenant, the Holy Spirit empowers us and is given without measure. There is no limitation. So as much of the Holy Spirit as you want, you can receive. Uh, the other day, I interviewed my new friend, Georgian Banoff of Global Celebration. If you've ever seen some of the Darren Wilson movies, uh, Finger of God, Father of Lights, um, or Holy Spirit, in some of those videos, you meet Georgian Banoff, and he's about uh, 72, 73 years old. I interviewed him for my podcast, Adventures in the Spirit, and this man has joy. And he's been empowered by the Holy Spirit. And everywhere he goes, he brings the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. He preaches to gypsies. He preaches to the poorest of the poor uh, in, in throughout the world. And he's got stories of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. He said this in his book because... Um, as I interview people, they'll send me some of their books. So he just released a book called Joy. And in that book, and on my, my episode, uh, Adventures in the Spirit with him, he testifies to how he got filled with the Holy Spirit. And he, it got to the point where he was in this group of people. He had just escaped from Bulgaria. He, he came to Christ, but he didn't understand everything about Jesus just yet, but he goes up on a mountain and he asks God if he's real. And then for the all night long, he's crying out to God. He feels the power of God flowing through him. And then as he's discipled, they talk to him about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So uh, this group of people laid hands on him. And while they're laying hands on him, he felt the power of God surging through him, the empowering Holy Spirit. And, it, and then he starts seeing himself in the courts of heaven. He starts seeing uh, Jesus on the throne. But the power got so overwhelming to him, he, he thought that it was going to crush him. So he asked the Holy Spirit to stop. But then real quickly, after it had 
stopped, he realized, no, this is given without limitation. So he said a principle he learned is to never ask the Holy Spirit to stop because he's not going to crush you no matter how you feel, but he will give you more. And so that's an incredible revelation that the Holy Spirit is given without measure. There is no limitation to his empowerment. We can have as much of the Holy Spirit or as little of the Holy Spirit as we want. I know for me, I, I just want to jump in. I want to jump into everything that he's got. If there's a power revival going on, I want to jump into the river of God and receive whatever it is that he wants to give. And it doesn't always have to be uh, something. I just want to spend time in his presence. I want, to, I want to worship God the Father through him. So the Holy Spirit empowers us. The Holy Spirit empowers you. But also the Holy Spirit guides us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God or even daughters of God. I think that knowing him and fellowshipping with him daily will know him and our identity and our place in the kingdom of God will know our role as he continues to guide us. We start the more time that we spend with him uh, as he guides us, as he instructs us, as he leads us, we start knowing that we are. Our identity is secure. Our salvation is safe within him. And we know whose we are. And we know who we are because of the Holy Spirit in us as he guides us. For as that verse of Romans 8, 14 says, if you're led by the Spirit of God, then you're a son of God. You're a daughter of the King. So as you're led by the Spirit of God, you start knowing your identity and your role to play uh, in the kingdom of God. So the Holy Spirit empowers, the Holy Spirit guides, but the Holy Spirit also teaches us. In John chapter 16, verse 13, it says that when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. So <clears throat> pause real quick right there. So he guides us into all truth. Now, the scripture is truth. The scripture right here, the word of God, this is my fire Bible. This is the most printed Bible in the world because it's the most smuggled Bible in the world. This Bible is called the fire Bible because it's the first Pentecostal charismatic Bible to, uh, to be printed. And so it is like a little mini Bible college. So I bought this a number, I bought a whole number of these and given them out, but it has the Holy Spirit throughout it. It points to the Holy Spirit. So it's the most smuggled Bible as it shows people the truth that is in the scripture. The Holy Spirit empowers us to learn the scripture, to grow in the scripture, uh, to understand all truth, because Jesus said that my word is truth. And Jesus was referring to the Logos word and he and also the written word. So he's referring to himself as the word of God, but also to what was the gift of the scripture to us. So the Holy Spirit guides us all into the truth. And the scripture is true. The scripture is absolute. The scripture is amazing. So he'll teach us these things and he'll teach us the scripture as we spend time in his presence. So not only does he teach us, but the Holy Spirit also can give us commands and we are to obey him. In the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 8, we see the story about Philip the, the evangelist. And this is a true story because all of the scripture is true. So in Acts chapter 8, we see the true story of Philip the evangelist, and God was instructing him to go find this person in a chariot. And the spirit in chapter 8, verse 29 of the book of Acts says, and the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. And in obeying, so the Holy Spirit commanded Philip to go over there and to join the chariot. And through that, Philip led this Ethiopian, this Ethiopian eunuch to Jesus, led him to the Lord, gave him the gospel message, expounded on the scriptures, expounded on all truth. 
and then water baptized them. And then the Holy Spirit took Philip away to another place for, uh, for more evangelism to take place. And that Ethiopian eunuch went off praising God, which shows us that he was also filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And what's interesting is that historians have traced uh, some church, church plants or church movements in Ethiopia to this day. Uh, so uh, it's not necessarily the nation that we know of as the nation of Ethiopia, Ethiopia but as the region, Ethiopia, uh, where the nation is currently, and, and that region around there, Somalia and those other places along uh, Eastern, Eastern Africa. And there are churches dating back 2,000 years and they have the, the stories pointing to a eunuch who had started those churches. Now, that's pretty interesting stuff. I'd encourage you, if you're interested in church history, go, go check that out yourself. But we see the Holy Spirit commanding Philip the evangelist, and Philip obeyed. So if the Holy Spirit gives us a command, we should always obey. Uh, we, and he'll give us these commands gently. I mean, it's not like a booming voice or stern or angry, but it's gentle. But when he says something, as long as it aligns with the scripture, we should obey. Uh, I think that's the most incredible, some of the most incredible things that we can ever do is to hear his voice, follow his leading, let him teach us, let him empower us and obey what he's saying. So as a person, the Holy Spirit has a personality and he has a will. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, it says, All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. And in context, this is talking about the spiritual gifts. That, and uh, in, in the next few minutes, um, I'll, I'll start zeroing, zeroing in on speaking in tongues, the spiritual prayer language. But all the gifts are empowered by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he will. So he gives us spiritual gifts according to his will. And some of us, um, as the Holy Spirit fills us, we, we got the gifts of administration, the gift of helps, the gifts of service. Uh, we've got mercy. Uh, there's even the, the spiritual gift of singleness. Uh, and there's other spiritual gifts. Martyrdom is a spiritual gift. Uh, but that's not tonight's topic, but there's prophecy, there's tongues, interpretation of tongues, and numerous other spiritual gifts that he apportions as he will. So as a person, the Holy Spirit has a will. So not only does the Holy Spirit have a will, not only does he command or teaches and guides, and not only can he be grieved because he has emotions, and not only can he empower us, but as a person... I think it's very important that we get to know him, that we get to fellowship and dialogue with him, that we walk and talk with him as a friend. But more importantly, we need to know him as God. The Holy Spirit is God. And as God, we can worship him. Now, I know some people, sometimes when I say these things, people get a little, they, they don't fully grasp it because maybe people could understand worshiping God as Father. They could wor understand worshiping God the Son, Jesus. But God the Holy Spirit, even though the Holy Spirit loves to glorify Jesus, we can still worship the Holy Spirit as God, just as we can worship Jesus just as we can worship God the Father, we can worship the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 through 18 says, Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. So the Lord is the spirit. This verse, these verses are uh, pointing to the divinity of the Holy Spirit. And these are confirmed in the book of Acts when Peter confronted Ananias and Sapphira 
for lying to the Holy Spirit when they withheld a portion of the proceeds of, of the property that they sold, Peter confronted them or Ananias and said, you lied to God, but that was in the context and in reference to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God. He's a person within the Trinity, the Godhead of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is divine and we can know him. We can fellowship with him. We can talk to him. We can dialogue with him. We can obey him and we can worship him. So right now, that's what I want to do just for the next 30 seconds is let's worship the Holy Spirit. So right where you are, worship the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, you are amazing. We worship you, Holy Spirit. You are God. Will you give us more insight, more truth into you being God, into worshiping you? Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. Love you, Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God, and he can give spiritual gifts and apportion them according to his will. Let, let me pause real quick. Right now, as, as I'm saying these things, I'm feeling the fire of God in my hands. So Holy Spirit, I don't want to, Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, you pour it out. Thank you. Okay. So the Holy Spirit apportions the spiritual gifts according to his will. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, it lists nine gifts of the Spirit. This isn't an exhaustive list of gifts, uh, but these are some of if we really want to designate or delineate things, you know, some people can consider these the major spiritual gifts, even though all spiritual gifts glorify Jesus. They're from God. They're given by Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, working together as one and being apportioned out. Um, and every spiritual gift is needed. No spiritual gift is better or greater in a sense. Now, someone might say, Jared, what did, you, what did you just say? Because doesn't the apostle Paul say prophecy is the greater gift uh, in 1 Corinthians 14. In context, Paul was saying prophecy is a greater gift in edifying people. He's not saying it's like the number one spiritual gift. He's just saying in edification, it's greater because people need to be edified, encouraged, and comforted. But all spiritual gifts, there's the level ground of the cross. All spiritual gifts are needed. They all help build the body uh, and the church. So they're all needed. So you might have some, some spiritual gifts that you're stronger in. That is amazing. Keep growing in it and let God use you and grow through you. And, and just know that, that the, the whole church body needs you. It needs the hand, the arm, the legs. It needs all of it. And you are part of the church body using your spiritual gifts for God's glory. So don't compare your spiritual gifts with someone else's because they're all amazing. They're all equal. Uh, they have different functions, different roles. Uh, they're multifaceted. And, and they all glorify Jesus, and they're all needed. So you are amazing. I want you to know that because of the Holy Spirit in you, and your spiritual gifts are, are much needed, and they're just as amazing as the person to your right, to your left, in your church, just as amazing. So the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so the nine spiritual gifts that Paul mentions there are the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the word of prophecy, Faith, healing, miracles, discerning spirits, tongues, and, inter and the interpretation of tongues. And so from the nine gifts mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, tongues, the interpretation of tongues, and prophecy are what are known as 
the three vocal gifts of the spirit, meaning that they're spoken. So tongues, the interpretation of tongues and prophecy are vocal gifts being spoken. And the gift of tongues defined by C. Peter Wagner is the gift is the special, the gift of tongues is the special ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to speak to God in a language they've never learned or to receive and communicate an immediate message of God to his people through a divinely anointed utterance in a language they've never learned. So it's a special ability that God gives to speak to God in a language. That's the prayer language. And then the other part is to receive and communicate an immediate message through a divinely anointed utterance in a language they've never learned. And then that's where the interpretation comes in. That's the, the tongues for the church body. Now, I firmly believe that the spiritual prayer language of tongues is for all of us. And there's biblical support to that, especially Acts chapter 2, verse 38 through 39 on the day of Pentecost, which we'll get into here in the next couple of minutes. But tongues as a spiritual prayer language are connected to prophecy because it's part of the vocal gifts. It's spoken. And tongues on the day of Pentecost were prophetic. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, fast forward just a little bit. In Acts chapter 2, verse 11, it shows us that tongues was declaring, on the day of Pentecost, tongues was declaring the mighty works of God. So prophecy foretells the word of God, and prophecy foretells the word of God. On the day of Pentecost, tongues was foretelling the word of God, forth telling the praises and the mighty works of God as people heard people, you know, Nate, people from all around the world were gathered hearing these, the, the disciples speaking in tongues, declaring the praises of God in languages, earthly languages, and I also believe in heavenly language, that people knew and understood the praises of God. So people from all nations were knowing these guys are unlearned. They never learned this, know this language before, but I hear them speaking in it and they're declaring the mighty works of God. So as a vocal spiritual gift, it's prophetic and forth telling the word of God on that day and that function. So on the day of Pentecost, they were forth telling the mighty works of God. And then 3000 people were saved that day, responding to the gospel message. But we see that it's connected, tongues are connected to prophecy because when Peter stood up and, and, and spoke and declared the gospel message, he said what was taking place was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and that it was fulfillment of Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32. So he said, Pointing to Joel 2, 28 to 32, he said, In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So as the spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost, Peter's pointing to Joel chapter 2, verses 20 through 32, saying this is the fulfillment of that, of Joel 2, 28 through 32, of the prophetic, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the language used saying, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men see visions, old men dream dreams, or your male servants receiving the, the spirit empowerment, your female servants receiving, it's hyperbole. It's, it's basically God exaggerating, saying the Holy Spirit is poured out on everyone. You're going to see dreams and visions from people of all ages. You're going to see visions, not just men, not just women, everybody. There's no distinction as the Holy Spirit is poured out. And tongues and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was prophetic. 
fulfilling Joel 2, 28 to 32, as Peter showed that in, in Acts chapter 2. So the Holy Spirit was poured out prophetically. The speaking in tongues was taking place in languages from around the world, but also heavenly languages. And they were declaring the mighty works of, of God. So tongues are prophetic. Right now, I, I like to, this is, this is halftime. So we'll just take a couple minutes here uh, where I'll, I'll turn it back to my bride. And um, uh, we'll, she'll share with you well, first, I'll share with you about the, the e-course, the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit e-course. There's two e-courses uh, that we've released um, on charismacourses.com. The first one is the Baptism with the Holy Spirit, and it's free. And we've had over 1,000 people go through that course, and we've received testimonies of people receiving the Baptism with the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's always encouraging when people do that. And we made that e-course free, even though there's online you know, you, you got to pave to have things online. Our firm conviction is the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit e-course has to be free because the Spirit's given without limit. The Holy Spirit's free. We want to get as many people around the world to hear this message uh, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that's on Charisma Courses. And then we've got a $30 e-course called the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit uh, on charismacourses.com. And that's where I, I go into a little more detail about what we're talking about tonight. Um, but uh, so what I'll do here is if people enroll in either course, Baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit e-course, I'll send you an email and invite you to the live coaching on Sunday night starting April 8th uh, at 8 p.m. and then uh, the following Sundays. So um, you'll receive that information. But not, I know some of us are busy. If some people enroll and they, they're not able to make it to the live coaching, just like tonight, uh, we've had 207 people register for this course. We film it and then we upload it to, to YouTube so that people can watch it later. So if you're unable to make it through the live coaching, if you've purchased, if you're going through the Baptism of the Spirit e-course and purchased the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit e-course, you'll s receive those links to that email. But we know not everybody has time for that, and that's okay. So if you feel led to give, my bride is going to talk about this exciting partnership that we've recently got in the next minute. And then as she shares that, after she shares that, we will talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then activate the incredible baptism of the Holy Spirit. So Rochelle. Hi, I'm back. Wasn't aware. I did drop the links for the Baptism of the Holy Spirit course, as well as the Fellowship with the Holy Spirit course, available on Charisma Courses into the chat. So check that out, and um, the links are there for you. <clears throat> but we also want to tell you about one exciting partnership that's new for us with Fireborn Ministries. We have known of Tom Dammons' ministry. He's based out of Minnesota for like two decades. But over time and space, uh, we live on the East Coast and he's in the Midwest and just life happened. And so we kind of didn't keep up with him for a while. And then over the last six months, um, specifically, Jared has been developing a friendship with him. They both flow in the prophetic. Tom is, in, is a prophet. He is in the office of the prophet. And Jared flows in the prophetic as well. And so they have this incredible friendship. And Tom started telling us about his ministry called Impact Ministries International and a new initiative that they were starting. Now, before I tell you about that, let me just tell you something about myself. Well, we have four kids, um, ages nine to 15. And I have had a stirring in my heart, either from watching documentaries or hearing news clips or just knowing about what's going on in the world, particularly in the area of sex trafficking. It just tugs on my heart and I didn't know what my part to play was in that. I would wake up from dreams and I'd say, Jared, I had a dream where I was rescuing women out of brothels and, you know, helping them start life again. And he was like, okay, well, I don't know what we're supposed to do. And I said, I don't know either. But I knew that it was something that Holy Spirit was drawing me to. I mean, I love organizations like A21. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of organizations doing good. But I didn't know what my role was in it until recently, when Tom Salmon and Impact Ministries International told us 
that they are raising funds to build safe houses, both in the US and in Honduras, and they have plans to expand other places globally. Um, but basically they're developing safe houses to rescue these women, to rehabilitate them along with children, if there are children involved and to help them encounter Jesus. And because of this amazing friendship that was totally divine that Jared and Tom have, and just the connection of our ministries together, we knew this was it. So we have plans as a family to go visit one of the very first safe houses being built in the state of Missouri in the end of May. We're going there as a family to see it. Um, and we're just excited about it. So we're partnering with them. And if you're interested in giving toward this, you can help change women's lives and help rescue them out of trafficking as well. So I will drop the link in there. It's through paypal.me forward slash fireborn ministries. And the very cool thing is that there's no overhead costs. There's no like, you know, somebody takes out 10 or 20% to like do paperwork or something. No, 100% of funds go straight to the homes to the rescuing of the trafficking victims and to the rehabilitation of these women and children. So we're thankful for this partnership. We're excited about it. And we know it's going to help change people's lives. So if that's something you want to partner with as well, just know that this is an amazing cause. It's a worthy cause and you can be part of changing the world. Thank you guys. Thank you so very much, Rochelle. So guys, uh, I'm excited for what God has and he's got in store for all of us. So uh, we're gonna start moving towards uh, the baptism with the Holy Spirit and activating the Holy Spirit. I, I have a firm conviction that praying in tongues should be daily. We should set aside, if we haven't started, we could set aside five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day or more and start growing in it. I, I think it's unfortunate that the churches um, have, uh, and I've been part of incredible churches, but I know that there's more of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's, there's no limitation. The Holy Spirit is given with, without measure. There's as much of the Holy Spirit as, as we want. So when people talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they're empowered. There's people filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by the Holy Spirit, but then the church leaves them there. It's like, okay, there you go. That's it. No, there's so much more. I believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a doorway, an entryway into more of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, could sp he'll speak to us and show us things before we'll have dream. We could have dreams, visions. We could minister in helps and service. Uh, intercessory prayer, but there's this distinct encounter that we can receive called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And for me, it launched me into this whole other world of intimacy with Jesus, of sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, of being empowered to be a witness and to tell other people the gospel message, because that's the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not the baptism of the Holy Spirit may have the the sign of tongues or the power of God taking place, but it's not the purpose to receive. It's not, tongues is not the purpose of it. That's a sign of it. The purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to make us a better equipped witness for Jesus, a better equipped uh, prayer warrior, better equipped uh, husband, father, you know, daughter, it's to make us into a better witness for Jesus. And there's so much more of the Holy Spirit after we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so for me, I have a firm conviction that, that you know, from the day that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I prayed in tongues for the very first time in my life, it was the most incredible experience of my life. And ever since we've seen Thousands of people receive the baptism with the Spirit. Every time I preach on Skype into Pakistan, I'll preach the gospel message, we'll pray healing over people and the baptism of the Holy Spirit over these amazing people in these villages in Pakistan, and they'll receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's a firm conviction of mine because biblically speaking, when people gave their lives to Jesus that day in the book of Acts, they were also baptized with the Holy Spirit and then they were water baptized or they were ba water baptized and then baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
I think we've separated so many things and we've just left the baptism of the Holy Spirit to a camp experience. No, it should be a daily lifestyle. It should be an encounter that equips us and empowers us to be a better witness, but it also should be a daily lifestyle. And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, it could start off small. If you've ever heard the voice of God, the whispers of God, the, but you don't have a personal private prayer language of speaking in tongues, of praying in tongues, well, just as you've heard the whisper of the Holy Spirit, you can ask him for that spiritual prayer language, and then you could listen for his whisper to speak to you in a language you don't know, you don't understand, and then you repeat that over and over again. So just as a baby goes goo gaga, and then later it grows as it, as it talks more, it says mama, dada, in time it becomes full sentences, a full-blown language we can grow in our spiritual prayer language. And so I have a firm conviction that we're to pray in it every day, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes or more and, and worshiping Jesus through it. We could go on a walk, we can drive, we can pray in it every day. We could sing in it and we grow and we could even do spiritual warfare in tongues and, and the language might grow and shift and change. Uh, some years ago, four friends of mine and I, we had this challenge to pray in tongues daily for two hours straight for two years daily for two hours for two years let me tell you what we all lived up to the challenge and we prayed in it one way or the other whether it's just laying on the floor praying in tongues for two hours plus praise and worship and everything else but praying in tongues or for me later it became working on a lifeguard stand watching people swim watching people you know I'm praying in tongues. I'm gaining a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And it's not just, we don't look at it legalistically as two hours. It's became a lifestyle. And so even to this day, if I'm walking, I'm alone or driving, I'm worshiping, praying, dialoguing, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues, you know, but you know, that two year period that I could look back on, I was so full of the Holy Spirit, so full of the Holy Spirit. And I got to give him away because the more you give away what he's given you, you'll receive more of the Holy Spirit. So uh, pray in tongues. And, and like, even when I was on the lifeguard stand, I would ask the Holy Spirit, I start praying in tongues and I'm watching the water and I'd ask the Holy Spirit for a prophetic word, word of knowledge, word of wisdom for the lead lifeguard coming through and I'd ask them questions and be like, whoa, how did you know that? Or yeah, you know, I'd tell them it was Jesus and I'd point them to Jesus. So as you pray in tongues, you'll develop a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. You'll start growing in more of the, the other gifts of the Spirit. I know for me, it was life-changing and it launched me into uh, an incredible uh, lifestyle of abundance of the, the joy of the Lord. Even though life has had its ups and downs, I'll still pray in tongues every day. When I was in combat in Afghanistan, you better believe I was praying in the spirit. When the truck ahead of me on several occasions blew up in front of me, I prayed in tongues. You know, uh, just the other day, I had the situation Tuesday night and I'm praying in tongues on my time. And uh, the Holy Spirit led this conversation with a guy who was working for me, my contractor. That's a whole different story. But we exposed, in the name of Jesus, his suicidal tendencies. And how, and he told me how he wanted to kill himself. And I'm praying, okay? And I, I uh, we get him the help we need. I'm not going to share this whole story. But we got him the help he needs. And as he was being picked up. I laid hands on him and I prayed over him in English and I prayed over him in tongues as he was weeping and telling me, thank you. And thank you. And I pointed him to Jesus. And that was just this Tuesday night. So tongues are part of the whole package of the Holy Spirit. So pray in tongues and ask God to give you uh, prophetic words, ask God to give you a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit and you'll start growing in it. So if you haven't received your personal private prayer language. And in the name of Jesus, we're going to pray for it tonight. Or if you have received uh, your spiritual prayer language, but you haven't spoken it in a while, 
you know, we, we want to reactivate you in the name of Jesus, all about Jesus tonight. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 39, it says that the, the, the Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, it says in Acts 2, 38, 39, the promise is for you and your children and all who are far off, for all who call on the Lord. All means all. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for all. All who call on the name of the Lord. So the gift, the baptism of the Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit is for you. If So Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one. It's as if he's laying hands on you. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he's the one that is baptizing you in the Holy Spirit. It can happen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit can happen the moment you give your life to Jesus. It can happen years down the road. Uh, it can happen. You know, I know people, my, my mom at one time, she had some doubts about it. And I said, Mom, I think one of these days you will wake up speaking in tongues. <laughs> and sure enough, she woke up in the middle of the night interceding for some people that were God had laid on her heart. She woke up speaking in tongues for the first time in her life, waking up my dad, and she's praying in the spirit. But then she had some doubts about that later on, so she stopped it. And then she's on a mission trip with me to the Dominican Republic, and we're out on outreach. We're seeing people get saved and healed, and she's like, Jared, I don't, I don't have it. it I, I really don't think that that was maybe that was just me. I said, no, mom, it could happen today. <laughs> this motorcycle drives up, drives up to us like a few minutes after that. The motorcycle dies in front of us, just can't move. My mom preaches the gospel to this guy. He gives his life to Jesus. He drives off and I'm a little ways, probably 20 feet down the road, talking to some other people. And then my mom walks over to me and says, Jared, I just was speaking in tongues. <laughs> And she is praying for that guy that she just led to the Lord. So it can happen anywhere. Uh, for me, it was an incredible experience. I've seen people receive it in 10 seconds, 20, uh, five minutes. You know, everybody's experience is different. Don't compare your experience with someone else's. God gave you what you needed when you needed it. He gave it to you how you needed it in a way that you would receive it. Uh, and so for me, it was, I felt the power, the love, the electricity of God. For some people, they'll just pray in the language. They'll just speak in tongues for 10, 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds in a language they don't know. And then that's it. But that's powerful. That's the entryway into the abundant life, the spirit empowered life to be a better equipped witness for Jesus as he's the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. But once you've received it, don't stop there. Praying it every day. So just as I said earlier about a baby developing the, the spiritual, uh, developing a language, we repeat it over and over and over again. We grow in it and we start praying in it and it will grow and it will shift. And the more time that we set aside for it, the more we'll have the more words, if you will. So Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit and he promises you the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is available for you. The Holy Spirit will empower you. And if you have not received your private prayer language, you know, um, real quick, I, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit a question right now and have him communicate to you in, in English. Let him talk to you just for the next 20 seconds. So if you've heard the voice of God, the whisper of God, ask him to give you something in English. You could write it down if you're taking notes. Write down what the Holy Spirit tells you in Jesus' name. So I'll give you 20 seconds to hear the voice of God or 30 seconds to hear the voice of God in English and then write it down. Amen. Okay, so the Holy Spirit loves you. 
and Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is promised to you. And there are no limitations to the Holy Spirit. And if you could hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in English, then you could also hear him speak to you in a language you don't know, you don't understand. And then you speak it out. At, when you ask him to fill you, you ask him to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And then you hear him, or you could even see it in your spiritual eyes, your spiritual mind. You could see those words. I know when I received it, I heard it loudly, a uh, loud whisper of the Holy Spirit. And it was one syllable. And, but I also saw it in my mind. And then I started speaking it over and over, repeating it over and over. And then more words came, more words flowed. And then it was two and a half hours of power, of love, a wave after wave of power. And that was my, my experience. And it changed me. It changed me. Um, I've never been the same ever since. So after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there are many fillings of the Holy Spirit. So once you've received your personal private prayer language of tongues, praying it every day, praying it for five minutes, 10 minutes, two hours, however long, grow in it and live the spirit empowered life and be launched into more adventures of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to activate. I'm going to pray here. We're going to activate people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If it's for the first time, uh, there's one baptism of the Holy Spirit. There are many fillings. So if you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you have received your personal private prayer language before, but you haven't prayed in it before or uh, didn't pray in it every day or, you know, uh, well, let's reactivate you in Jesus name, in Jesus name. So through this activation, if you're, um, if you have uh, your favorite worship music, I want to encourage you to start playing your, your favorite worship music. So as I, as I'm talking here, uh, start, if you've got music on your phone, some worship songs or a YouTube video, we're going to seek the face of Jesus and, and I'll pray and you'll ask to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then if you see this tongue, these tongues, this language in your mind, or you hear the Holy Spirit speak in your ear, then start speaking it out. You do the speaking as the Holy Spirit does the enabling. He's not going to, uh, he's not going to do it for you. You partner with him. It's like here, here he is, here you are. And then you kind of both partner and then it starts flowing. So you do the speaking as the spirit does the enabling. You may feel a rush. You may feel electricity. You may feel the love and the power. You may not. Um, it's, it's still all amazing. It's still an empowerment of the Holy spirit. And once you've received that language, praying it every day, uh, so I'm, I'm expecting God to do some incredible things. So with your favorite worship music going right now, uh, for the next four or five minutes, let's activate in the name of Jesus. So right where you are, let's pray. Start asking Jesus right now to fill you. Ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. So Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your outpouring. Will you baptize some precious people, these precious people in your spirit? Will you also reactivate others in Jesus' name? People uh, live now or people uh, watching this later, the same anointing here, the same anointing present right now will be present on the audio, present on the video for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So in Jesus' name, release Release your spirit and baptize people right now in Jesus' name. Fill them from head to toe, from head to toe. Empower them. Now, right where you are, start asking him, worship him, start praising him, start speaking praises to him. And in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in that language and start speaking it out. Repeat it over and over. It might be a silly word, a silly phrase, some funny phrases. Start speaking that out in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. And I want you to receive your language. And now I'm going to pray in mine. Don't repeat my language, but pray in the language the Holy Spirit has given you now. But I'm going to start praying in tongues and worshiping Jesus right now in Jesus' name. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. Be glorified. Be poured out right now in Jesus' name upon everybody. Be poured out in the name of Jesus. Lord God, you are high and lifted up. You are high to be praised. We give you glory. We give you honor. We worship and adore you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are high high and lifted up. You are seated on the throne of glory and you you love all of us. You pour out your spirit. You pour out your grace upon us because you love us. You empower us all to go tell others about you and we give you praise, all glory. You are high and lifted up. I see you on the throne. I see the crown. I see you, holy one. We ask for more. Will you give us more of your Holy Spirit? Will you give us more? Your Spirit is given without measure, without limitation. Will you give us more? Thank you. Start asking Him. So if you're praying in tongues now, switch to English and thank Him for it, but ask Him for more. Will you give us more? Will you give us more? And then start speaking in tongues in Jesus' name, worshiping him. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all praise. We give you all glory. We give you praise. We adore you. We worship you. We honor you. It's all about you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We draw near to you and we thank you. We thank you that we could call you friend. We thank you that we can call you Lord. We thank you that we can walk with your Holy Spirit. We can fellowship with you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Okay, I don't want to, if the Holy Spirit's still moving through you, keep praising him, keep worshiping him. In Jesus' name, thank him for it. If you, um, maybe you, you, were, uh, you asked, but you didn't receive, that's okay. Maybe you'll receive tomorrow as you keep asking. Maybe you'll receive while you're working. You know, just keep asking, keep asking for it because the Holy Spirit is for you. The gift is for you. He is for you. He wants the best for you and he fills you and he'll give you that in Jesus name. So keep worshiping him right where you are. Thank you, Jesus, for this night. Thank you, Jesus, for all these amazing people in Jesus name. So um, if anybody would like, um, We'd love to hear from you as to if any of you have uh, uh, what tell us what the Holy Spirit just did. Uh, we'd be encouraged by that. Or if you have some questions, I could open it up. But you could also feel free to uh, to go because it's it's nine oh two, um, and just keep worshiping and praying the Spirit every day. And I bless you. So um, I'll stay on here and. Uh, it, Someone could raise their hand and then we could call on you and you could unmute yourself. But I bless all of you in Jesus' name. This is going to be recorded and emailed out. Uh, if you want to recap it or even share the link with your friends, that's, you know, so that they're empowered too. So if any of you have questions, please feel free to ask. And, um, or if you got question, you know, you got a testimony as to what the Holy Spirit just did, please let us know. You could raise your hand or unmute yourself. So if you got to go, I bless you in Jesus' name. You're welcome, Yukita. I just saw your message, Yukita. I bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, my name is Ka, and I have a question. Uh, I have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but for some of my friends, 
uh, they felt that they may be like second class citizen in the, in the sense that they have asked for it, but could not get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How would you kind of explain to them gently somehow that, uh, well, at least what to say to them? So they think that they're second class citizens because they haven't received? Yes, in that respect. Oh, well, I would encourage them. I would bless them. I would lay hands on them and say, you know, um, just keep asking because the scripture says, ask uh, like the persistent widow, you know, going to the judge, keep asking, keep asking, keep asking and, until, you know, and God is not a, a judge uh, in that sense. God loves to bless his kids. Uh, I'd encourage them, hey, just keep asking, be like the widow, the persistent widow, and keep asking, and you will receive it, and it's for you. Um, if it were me, I'd lay hands on them, and I'd pray with them, but I won't pressure them, you know? Um, everybody receives differently. Some people need the laying on of hands. Some people just, you know, need something similar to this. Uh, uh, some people, like like my mom, had to wake up praying in it. You know, um, I would just encourage them. I'd show them the scripture, keep growing with them, and let them know that even if they don't have it now, you know, they keep holding on to the promise. They keep declaring it and decreeing it uh, and uh, just encourage them, you know, and show them that God loves them just as much as he loves you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the scripture where it says, love the Lord your God with all your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself is not about self-love or selfish love, as some people tend to think. It's knowing, having a personal revelation of God's love for you and how much he loves you individually. He loves you personally. You can turn around and love people, love your neighbor like you know the revelation of God's love for you. So just encourage them in God's love and keep encouraging them and pray with them and let them know that he loves all his kids the same and uh, keep asking. And I believe um, one way or another, they'll receive it. Now, whether there is a manifestation or not, I mean, I know people who feel a power of God upon them. They receive a baptism with the spirit. Uh, perhaps they have an aversion to tongues. Uh, maybe they haven't been taught about it or they've been scared of it, um, but they've received it. Uh, but then weeks later, you know, they're in prayer and it just happens, you know, uh, and uh, it could just come through the presence. Just encourage them. I hope that answered your question, Carr. Yeah, thanks very much. That's good. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm here to serve, and I, I, I really enjoyed this night. So any other questions? Yes, Jared. My name is Willie from Jakarta. Yes, Willie. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Sorry I late uh, joining you because uh, probably I thought you just start 8 o'clock. This is morning in Jakarta. Oh. 8 o'clock. But I... Oh. Thank you I for joining you in, Willie. Thank you. Earlier. We'll email you the video. You will receive the email of the video. Yeah, okay. Well, my question was, how many times someone can be baptized in spirit? Great question. So the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is one time. It's a one-time experience and encounter, but there are many fillings of the Holy Spirit afterward. So the Holy Spirit lives in us, dwells in us, inhabits us, and we can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but then there are numerous times that we could be filled one way or another, whether that's just asking for a filling of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I ask to be filled every day, <laughs> and I know I'm full, but, you know, I, I would love, I don't always feel the presence of uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, but there are other times that I do. Sometimes it's just a rece receiving of knowing I'm filled by faith. And then sometimes it's like, like 
like even now this, this evening my whole right hand has been on fire you know and i know that that's the filling of the holy spirit so there are multiple fillings in ephesians uh let's let's go there real quick ephesians when it's talking about uh so ephesians P, uh paul was talk talking to the ephesians and he mentioned um how the holy spirit can be grieved he, he mentions many fillings let's see come on come on Galatians. here so we're to pray in the spirit at all times in the spirit with all prayer supplication um and then uh oh let's see actually Thessalonians when we're testing prophecy when we're testing prophecy we're to test everything hold on to the good and then there's multiple fillings so whenever we see language even in first corinthians 12 he talks about and in galatians one lord one faith one baptism you know there is the the one lord there's the one faith, Christianity. There's uh, one baptism. There's, you know, all that one. There's even one baptism with the Holy Spirit. But there are many fillings, uh, many fillings. So um, yeah, in Ephesians 5, I know I'm on the right track for this. But it talks about, about the many fillings. Okay, right here, 518, Ephesians 5. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. So Ephesians 5, verse 18. Now, um, verse 19 says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So don't get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Greek says that that's not just be filled, but it's be being filled. It's ongoing. It's lifelong. There's many fillings. Be being is prolonged. It's active. It's many. So it's not just one and done, but there are many fillings. And that's in the Koine Greek of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. But then also other signs are addressing one another in psalms and hymns singing to one another it's uh g giving praise and worship to jesus that's you know those are incredible things that we we should walk in you know um submitting to one another that's that's all part of living the spirit empowered life so ephesians 5 18 is be being filled so there's one baptism with the holy spirit but numerous um multiple uh, limitless without measure fillings of the holy spirit um, in this life and um then once we're in glory i, I think we're constantly 24 7 for eternity filled amen so i hope that answered your question willie yeah um in other words in other words um you're baptized once but manifestation can be more than once oh yeah Oh yeah, um, the manifestation. Yes, there's multiple. Uh, I mean, biblically speaking, there are multiple, manifestations. Yeah. Um, you know, and think about it. It's like it's like some some manifestations. Um, it's like if we put our finger in a light socket or something, we'll get electrified, right? If we touch God, we can shake, yep. we can yep. quake, we can fall. Uh, we'll worship. You know, but those manifestations need to point yeah. to Jesus. We need to get up, changed and transformed and, and um, you know, submitting to one another, singing psalms and hymns uh, to one another, walking in, in the faith as Ephesians 5, 18 through, through 21 shows, you know, singing psalms, spiritual songs, you know, and there are manifestations. Um, and then, I mean, revival meetings, there's different manifestations, but we're not focused on the manifestation. We're focused on Jesus and we're changed through it uh but if there's 
a move of the Holy Spirit and it's real and it's genuine, I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in as long as it's also biblical. Uh, I'm jumping in and I check the fruit of it too. But um, I also know revivals can come and go, but my faith is not in the revival. My faith is in the person of Jesus who blesses us with the manifestations. And whether I feel or shake okay. or, or not, I'm going to thank him, you know, and, and I'll, I'll walk in, in the feeling and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So, um, yeah, there's numerous, limitless. In John chapter 3, Willie, uh, Jesus said that the, the Holy Spirit is without measure, without measure. And I believe that that's as many feelings as we want uh, in this life. Uh, there are manifestations uh, and... Uh, and, but we don't have to manifest. I mean, I've been at revival meetings and I'm not manifesting, but I'm okay. I'm pressing into Jesus, <laughs> you know? Um, and then there are times if I'm praying okay. in my own private prayer place, here, here's a principle I want to encourage people to, to know. It's called the push principle. Pray until something happens. Uh, maybe we've all seen the bumper sticker saying push, pray until something happens or whatever, but it, it's a true principle. Spend time, prolonged amount of time in the presence of God. Worship him and see what happens. Start praying as much as you can. And trust me, the Holy Spirit is going to hit you on power. I think every manifestation, most manifestations I've had, and again, it's not about the manifestation, but it's in my personal private prayer place with him. It's not in the church. It's not at the altar. I mean, those things are great when they happen but it's in my personal prayer language. So my revival meeting is with him. And that's what I encourage everybody to do is if, just pray until something happens, see what happens. If there's ele electricity, there's love, there's tongues, there's fire, there's visions, there's shaking, there's quaking, there's falling down in your private place. Pray until something happens and then do it again and then do it again and keep doing it. I mean, it's, it's yeah, just if you've got time, Pray until something happens and see what happens. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, can I'll take one more question or love to hear a testimony from somebody, but uh, cause uh, I'll take either or. So if someone has a testimony of what God just did in them tonight, that'd be awesome and encouraging or uh, just a, uh, a question. Let's see. I see a, a message from Michelle. Do you always hear the Holy Spirit speak in the spiritual language first? Do you understand your spiritual prayer language? I feel like I've received a spiritual language, but I don't understand it. I don't hear it first. Okay, so do you always hear the Holy Spirit speak in the spiritual prayer language? No. So tonight with the activation, uh, just because I, I don't want to get stuck in methods or a a model of you can only receive the Holy Spirit one specific way. Listen, and there's, he's given without measure. So he'll do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. So for tonight's activation, I just felt like uh, part of my activation was to get you to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in, in English, but then also to get to hear the Holy, then afterward, hear the Holy Spirit in a language that you don't know, that is tongues. And then you start speaking it. Now, there are times where I've seen people just get hands laid on them and the Holy Spirit hits them and they'll speak in tongues. So they didn't hear it, but it flowed out of them like a river. Uh, other times where um, people have taken a step of faith, uh, you get numerous people laying hands on them and they'll just start uh, praising Jesus, like praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. And as people are laying hands on them, praying over them, and they'll, they're just praising and worshiping Jesus, then it just switches to, uh, to tongues. Um, and, and that's amazing. So uh, I hope that that answered your question, uh, Michelle. And you do not have to understand your spiritual prayer language because in 1 Corinthians, uh, I'd encourage you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14 which is all about uh, spiritual gifts and speaking in tongues and see that 
um, you don't have to understand what you're praying. Tongues edifies you. Prophecy edifies others. So uh, you don't necessarily understand your spiritual prayer language. Now, for me, um, again, it, back to the secret place, the, the place of prayer, I learned how to interpret tongues in the secret place. And that's because I'm praying in tongues and I asked Jesus, Jesus, will you give me the interpretation of what I just prayed? Now, I don't always know or understand what I'm praying in tongues, but again, pray until something happens, uh, spend time in the presence of God, uh, worship him, and, and then he'll start, you know, you just start talking to him, build relationship with him, um, communicating with him. And, and you could ask him as you pray in tongues, as you take that step of faith, hey, Jesus, will you give me the interpretation? And that's between you and him. And that's who it's about. It's about him. Um, so I'd encourage you, Michelle, that uh, you said that you don't understand it. Well, it edifies you. You don't have to understand it. Um, but ask him to help you understand it and just grow with him. Uh, but just know that it edifies you, it glorifies him, and it helps you worship him. Um, and so you don't have to always understand it, and you don't have to hear it first. There's just so many other ways, but just for the sake of tonight's activation, that's what I felt the Holy Spirit tell me to, to encourage people who are joining live or watching this later as to one of the ways of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I hope that answers your question, Michelle. Oh, yeah, that's great. So you said, thank you. I didn't know I could hear the Holy Spirit talk in a spiritual language in addition to English. Thank you for your time. I look forward to listening to the replay. Continue to get to know the Holy Spirit more. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Guys, I love you all. I bless you all. Thank you so much for being part of this. We will be emailing this out to everybody. Um, and uh, so you could watch it. You could share it. I'd encourage you to. Uh, so it's 919 Eastern time. As I'd said, you could hang out a little while longer after the hour long instruction, but thank you. Email info at firebornministries.com. Let us know what God did in you, through you, um, what you encountered, what you felt, uh, what the Holy Spirit did in you. And um, yeah, I, I love you all. I bless you all. Please feel free to um, be part of the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit e-course and the live coaching starting um, April 11th at 8 p.m. I believe my bride is giving you some of that information in the chat here. Uh, but also, um, you know, feel free to donate. If, if the Holy Spirit leads you, you could go to firebornministries.com, donate, uh, and it goes towards missions. It goes towards rescuing sex trafficking victims, and specifically the paypal.me forward slash firebornministries. That goes directly to rescuing, rehabilitating sex trafficking victims. We're here to uh, see people, see Jesus set people free. So um, I love you all. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, thank you for these incredible, amazing people. Thank you for what you did tonight. Thank you for being with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. We love you. Be glorified. Now may we walk in the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.